Hello, my name is Kate Guthrie Caruso and I am the scientist from RG MOOC headquarters. If you are just joining us, this is RG MOOC, Rhetoric and Composition, the Persuasive Power of Video Games as Paratax. If you would like to enroll in the course, um, please go to the link bit.ly forward slash RG MOOC course. Today I'm going to be talking about developing paragraphs. All right, so we're going to talk first about the structure of a paragraph. Okay, um, in a broad sense, and then we'll narrow it down and take a look. We're primarily going to be talking about body paragraphs today, or standalone paragraphs. Standalone paragraphs pretty much um, can take the form of a body paragraph, um, and we'll cover introductions and conclusions later on in the course. All right, so the structure of a paragraph, um, just like an essay has a formal structure, um, so does a paragraph. It has certain um, things that it must do um, in order to be convincing. Okay. So there are really three primary things that are going to be found in, um, in any body paragraph. Okay. The first, and I think the most important, is the topic sentence. Okay. Um, the topic sentence is going to be um, the developed argument of the paragraph, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay. Then unification of that topic through the support that you prove. Okay. And finally, you're going to use critical strategies to develop that support. Okay, So if you're doing all three of those things in your paragraph, then you're going to have a strong um, a paragraph um, that is going to work to convince the audience. So topic sentences. What are they? We must first define them. So they reveal the main point of the paragraph. They connect that paragraph to the essay's overall thesis. And finally, they are arguable, or they make a claim that the paragraph will then prove. I like to call them mini thesis statements. And the reason that I do this is because um, students tend to grasp the idea of what a thesis statement is pretty easily. Okay, the thesis is the argument of the overall essay. Okay, so thesis is a larger scale. Um, if I call the, the topic sentence a mini thesis, what they then start to see is that the, the topic sentence needs to take an argumentative shape very similar to the shape of a thesis statement. So you've got a broader claim okay, that you're proving in your thesis statement and then each paragraph will then have its own argument that it must then prove within that paragraph or with some, some topic paragraphs go a couple of paragraphs but within that topic okay, um, and that must be proved before you can move on. All right, And so that's really what um, is going on here. That means that topic sentences cannot be statements of fact. I think this is probably one of the hardest things for students um, to get the hang of. They really like to write statements of fact. If you look at the first sentence of your paragraph where topic sentences are usually found um, and it doesn't prompt the reader to say prove it, then you probably do not have an arguable statement. So let's take a look at an actual paragraph. This is from one of the texts from the course. It's Kelly Weiss's Paratext, The Beating Heart of a Text. I pulled a paragraph out of her text. Okay. We're going to take a look at first the topic sentence. Okay. So to find a clear topic sentence, there are three steps that you will do um, to make sure that um, it is a good topic sentence. And I'm putting them all up at the same time because one and two are really um, closely related. Okay, so for number one, what is the main point of the paragraph? Meaning, what do you expect the paragraph to prove? Okay, so let's take a look at this sentence. In season two, episode two, The Hounds at Baskerville, John Watson and the audience experience the power of the paratext. Okay, um, and number two is, is it arguable? So first off, let's look at number two. Is it arguable? Well. Yeah, there we're prompting, right? Okay, um, we expect that this paragraph will prove to us that um, Watson and the audience experience this power of the paratext. Okay, um, and the main point of the paragraph then is going to be about the power of the paratext. Okay, so those two are linked together. Um, generally, I answer the main point and then is it arguable, but um, I wanted you to see how they're interlinked. Okay, and then number three, can you connect to the essay's thesis if you have the full text? Now, I haven't linked the full text here because we're looking just at paragraphs right now, um, but you can absolutely go into our course and take a look at the full text and see, okay, does this 
body paragraph then tie into the overall thesis. That's going to be the final ultimate test in making sure that you have a logical um, paragraph when you have an essay. Is, is it tying into the overall argument of the essay? All right, there are a couple of other forms of topic sentences that I do want to briefly touch on um, that you can feel free to experiment with. Um, they, um, are, they come up in different situations, okay? Um, the first is complex sentences, okay? Um, usually this is when you begin a paragraph combined with a transition from the previous paragraph. So if you want to continue a thought um, on that is closely related, so um, it's a slightly different topic, but you're just kind of finishing up a point and then moving on, um, you may want to um, experiment with a complex sentence, uh, topic sentence. Okay, questions. I very much hesitate um, in, in letting my students do questions for topic sentences, and here's why. Um, frequently, people like to give rhetorical questions um, as their topic sentences, and that is not going to do anything better than a statement of fact, okay? It's not going to help you frame your argument, okay? You must, if you're going to give a question, it must be one that demands to be answered, okay? Um, and then your paragraph will spend the entire time actually answering that paragraph or that topic, okay, that question. So be careful with these. Make sure that you're, you're looking at it. And I would be careful how many questions you ask ever in um, an essay. So um, think about um, how, what effect you want to have on your readers. Okay, and then finally pivots. Okay, pivots are not in the beginning of a paragraph. They usually um, are found when a paragraph changes direction midway. So frequently we'll find these, um, for instance, in counter-arguing. So let's say you want to first present a concession. Okay? So you'd give your concession, then you'd have your pivot topic sentence, and then you'd be turning, basically, um, that information um, into what your actual argument is. So um, you're making a certain claim. Um, you know, some people you have to concede a point and then you're moving on to why it's still an important point, okay, for your essay, okay, making it work for you. All right, focusing your paragraph through unification, okay, so this is step two in the list of three things that I gave you at the very beginning, okay. There are a couple of things that you want to do um, to unify your paragraph. First is to have logical progression of details, always working to prove topic sentences. Next, repeat keywords or phrases to clue in readers to the progression of the argument. And finally, use transitional words and phrases to add an idea, present a contrasting idea, or draw a conclusion. Okay. So, the logical flow. Okay. What I've done is I've gone through the paragraph and I've highlighted each sentence in a different color. Um, and this is really where we see this logical progression happening. So. Um, this second sentence, okay, right, the one that happens right after the topic sentence, all the moments leading up to Watson's caged experience in the lab led to his conclusion, and possibly the audience's, that he was in danger of attack from a monstrous beast that had somehow managed to find its way into the lab. Okay, now remember, we're expecting this paragraph to stay on topic to prove about the, pair of the para power of the paratext um, for uh, the audience and on Watson. Okay, so we get his experience of the moments leading up to it, right? Okay, next, his vision of the hound is solely based upon previous information given to him, red eyes, black fur, enormous stature, and the audience shares in this visceral effect. Okay, so then we get a slight movement, right? Okay, the vision of the hound is this previous information. Okay, we're tying into the topic sentence, Okay, and we're moving it forward as well, okay, um, with vision. Okay, and the next one for logical flow, without the eyewitness accounts, okay, so that's referring to that previous information given, right? Watson would likely have deduced a less threatening cause to the noises within the lab. Okay, then finally, reality is then questioned once Watson doubts his perceptive abilities. Okay. And then the conclusion that is drawn from all of this is in the final sentence. The show seems to be suggesting the development of a filter questioning empirical evidence trusting nothing, as so much of our thoughts and perceptions are framed by outside sources. OK, 
Okay, so each of these sentences is building upon the information that we got in the last one to give us this logical flow. Okay. Next, repeating keywords and phrases and using transitional words. What you'll see here is I've gone through and I've highlighted um, the keywords or phrases and, and the ones that are um, closely related, such as monstrous beast and hound. Okay, um, these are what are linking us together. So we get audience, audience, audience. Okay, so we know audience is a very important thing that is cluing us in. Okay, we also get perceptive and perceptive. This will affect eyewitness accounts. Okay, um, and vision. Okay, all of these things are cluing us in to the information of the paragraph. Okay, tying us into this idea of the power of the paratext. Okay, and the same is true if I would go through and look for transitional words as well. If you need a list of transitional words, these are easily found online. So um, a simple Google search of transitional words and you'll find all the information you need there. All right, finally, you have the critical strategies in paragraphing. Okay, um, uh, you may use one, two, three, or all of these. Okay, um, but what is important is that you are utilizing them to prove your argument. Okay, so the first one is examples and illustrations. So in the last um, paragraph that I gave you, um, that's what is happening. We are getting specific examples from the text, okay, um, that they are developing on. Okay. Um, number two is narratives and anecdotes. Okay. Narrative is um, the development of a story over a time, period of time, and an anecdote is a story within a short frame of time or, or a moment in time. Okay. Number three, citing data, facts, statistics, details, etc. Um, many of you are starting to pull in research from um, other readings, things like that. That absolutely helps to build your um, um, writing. Um, you want to make sure that anything that you are bringing in and citing data is then tied to that topic sentence. How is it helping to prove that topic sentence? Okay. Number four, analyzing text. If you've noticed in this class, we are defining text very broadly. Um, video games are text, um, and even the videos that you are watching are considered text. So um, any of the text you might want to analyze, you could bring in as well. Again, always working to tie it back into the topic sentence. Okay, defining terms. Okay, you absolutely may find that you need to define terms. Um, connotative definitions um, versus denotative definitions. Denotative um, is when you are talking about um, the dictionary definition. Those are when you, when you know your audience won't be familiar with them. Um, connotative definitions are going to be um, when your audience is already familiar with it, but it has a vague meaning. So for instance, the meaning of home to me is quite different than the meaning of home to you. Okay, so making comparisons and finally examining cause and effect. Again, you may use one, two, three, all of these in your paragraph. The whole goal is that you are creating a critical structure by which you are proving your paragraph and your topic sentence. Okay, so the paragraph's argument. Thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can contact me on Twitter at Writer Carr, and you know how to contact me through the MOOC. Thank you.